Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for DE247. Welcome. This is my report, or a collection of snapshots from the show floor of OR Augmented World Expo in Santa Clara. This also happens to be my very first in-person conference in a little more than a year. Along with microprocessors like Snapdragon, an AR-enabled eyewear that looks very much like regular eyewear. There are also some newer technologies, like this AR-powered movie-making system called Velocity, and the AR-powered motorcycle helmet with eye-tracking called Aegis Rider from a Swiss startup. So we started about uh, 50 months ago, and we're looking for a market launch uh, mid to end next year. So this is a bird bath module. It's basically the same as an Unreal, uh, Unreal or like Lenovo smart are using. Those are Sony displays with 3000 nits. And they are OLED panels and um, yeah, they allow us to have like high brightness application, what you need for a motorcycle. And we have it combined with like a custom tracking module with a camera and IMU combination, which allows us to track the head relative to the motorcycle. In the last year, as more and more people were treated indoors, AR and VR technologies took on new role in facilitating remote collaboration and maintaining and deploying digital twins. So see how we took the actual CAD model and we aligned it to the physical device. And you can see the work instructions where it points out different places on here that the operation, or the operator or the tech may need to do some form of action. We have some instructions down here. We added extra content. So this right here is actually, if you get a little closer, just a, a video to help instruct the operator to you know add a little bit of context, add a little bit of detail. So at the end of the day, the whole point is how can we get the operator or the tech to you know retain as much knowledge as possible and speed up the actual, you know, maintenance that they're trying to do or uh, instruction that they're trying to get from completion from A to B. There is also a growing number of haptic devices that add new touch sensations in creative ways to give you feedback in your AR, VR experiences. Inside the bus, there are like 40 actors inside the bus. So 20 on the front and another 20 on the back so that you can feel all the like gunshots and all the like punches on the VR. The bands can be used in, in like many kinds of contexts, like not only the gaming, but also like music, concert, like uh, movie, or like, like military or police training. But still, the gaming is one of the largest uh, target markets at the moment right now for us. This AR character called RT from Bundle AR is here for fun photo ops for people who are attending the conference, but it also has a different purpose. It's here to show people that it's very easy to create AR content. Sure. Well, you know, what we think about in terms of augmented reality, one reason we really like working with people that are focused on training and development is there's no shortage of content that they already have. So, you know, they're, they're trying to train people on processes and equipment. And usually the way they're doing it today is, you know, a slide deck with uh, 150 oh, yeah. PowerPoint slides uh, or a training manual with size, you know, six font that they have to reference when a procedure comes up. But they need to have that context. What we do is we can repackage that and deploy it as an AR experience so they can just access that through their device and they have the right content at the right time but in a medium that just provides context to the things that we're looking at. The, the content management system is what we use to build and deploy augmented reality. And, and the whole idea is it's a no-code platform. So you know, someone like myself, I'm not a developer, but I can build AR, and I do build AR every day. Um, and that's been live to the public for about a year. As you can see, AR and its twin cousin VR are expanding beyond their game roots into training, collaboration, and simulation. In the near future, how will they transform our post-pandemic work and social interactions? I look forward to reporting on these trends. Until next time, have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. I'll see you somewhere on a design and simulation software conference show floor.